Hello there. My name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. Today, I want to take you on a behind the scenes tour of what it's like to be a member of the Pre Algebra Teachers Math Membership. I want to share with you all of the lesson plans, resources, and activities that you will have instant access to if you decide to become a member. We are your one stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. So once you become a member, there's no need for anything else. No need to waste time on the internet purchasing $2, $3 items here and there because that just means you're prepared for one day. But what about the next day? What about the next week? That is the beauty of the pre-algebra teachers math membership. You can lesson plan weeks ahead so that you are prepared and you save time and you have all of your lesson plans and resources done. So let's dive right in so that you can take a look of what it's like to be inside the membership. When you log in, you will see right here, you got Lisa Simpson here ready to welcome you in. So we have an, an, we have an area where you can come and introduce yourself. You can come ask questions. We have a private Facebook group just for members where we collaborate, where you can ask questions and get help because being a teacher is not a solo gig. And it's amazing to be able to have a whole community of teachers who are doing exactly what we're doing. So this is our sixth and seventh grade lesson plan area. So when you come in here, you will find everything you need for sixth and seventh grade. So we have our daily flash. This is our bell ringers or, or warm up, whatever you want to call it. And you can see right here, everything is corresponded with all of our chapters. So if you click on it, this is our warm ups for chapter one. So you can see here it's set up with four problems and an answer key Four problems and an answer key. Everything has an answer key because you don't have time for that. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to pick any one of these. I'm going to pick chapter three because why not? In each uh, chapter, there are instructional videos for you to use and share with your students. What I love about this is that if you have a student who is absent, you can just send them the link to this video. Or um, if you have students who don't understand or still need more help, you can send them this video to get additional help. We have, let's see, okay, we have our Common Core lesson plan right here. So if you have to turn and submit lesson plans to your administration, you can just print this and and turn it in we have our texas teak lesson plan so if you're in texas we have the same thing it goes over which standards it covers where the procedures the bell work the objectives the i can statement and then you can type in what accommodations you use any reflection you want to use we have student note takers so these note takers can be used by can be used watching our instructional videos or they can be used uh, while you teach using our PowerPoints. So these are this is a PowerPoint on solving equations by adding and subtracting. So you can go through all the notes here. In the notes, there's always notes, there's always examples, and then an answer key. So you can give your students the note taker while you teach and everything corresponds. We also have practice problems. So every single one of our practice problems has between 20 and 25 problems. So you can see it right here. And there's always an answer key. We have additional printable activities like coloring pages. This is holiday themed. We have mazes, printable mazes. We have in this particular chapter, we have a fun board game, printable board game. Um, if I go into a different chapter, let's just say geometry again, we have videos and we have, you know, oh, we have sort cards as well. So students cut these out, glue them in the answer column. Um, and again, we have more mazes. Let's see. Oh, yes. OK, so we have more mazes that look like this. Um, and okay, so that's it for sixth and seventh grade. If I keep scrolling, you will see we have the same thing for eighth grade. We have an area for early finishers. So this is perfect for students who, you know, maybe finish their homework early or need a little bit more independent work. And you want to give them something mathy, but not boring. So we have crossword puzzles. 
that's all math. We have math menu, which is choice boards, which I love. So we have choice boards for division, fractions, geometry, expressions, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So if I just click the expressions to show you, we have a choice board here. So students can pick and choose what they want. And then we have math Sudoku. I personally don't like Sudoku. My brain just doesn't do well with it, but I have students who love it. So why not? Okay, so if I go back to the home area, we have, that was early finishers. We have an area for extras too. Two of my ultimate favorite activities are in here. We have so many things. I'm not gonna show you everything, but one of my ultimate favorite activities is the skills list. So if I pull up, say, seventh grade Common Core, these are all the seventh grade skills list and my students will type or pencil, because I print this for them, they will write in the date that was taught for, say, this standard, date that it was reviewed, and date that it was assessed. And by the end of the year, they can literally see how much they have learned. And it's proof that they have learned so much. We have the same thing for our Texas Teaks. And we also have, I have broken down my must teach standards. So if you're feeling like, man, I don't know if I can get to everything, these are the must teach standards for sixth grade. These are must, must teach standards for sixth, seventh grade and eighth grade. The other activity that I love is my Tic Tac math. And this is, I'm just gonna pull up, say the sixth grade. This is perfect for the end of the year for state testing. So you can see here, it is set up just like Tic-Tac-Toe. It is a three by three grid. The questions on the perimeter are multiple choice and the question in the center is an open-ended question. So they get both type of questions. You can have students play in partners like Tic-Tac-Toe or you can assign this individually because it's only nine problems. So it's not super overwhelming. And this whole activity covers every single standard. So you can see on this one page, this covers ratios and proportions. This covers um, equations. This one covers geometry. This one covers number systems. Um, and then as you keep going, so there's an answer key. As you keep going, it covers more and more. It covers every single one. So if you, I like to start giving one of these sheets like once a week, beginning in like March, depending on when your state test is. Mine's usually in May. So I give one sheet a week just to make sure that every single one of my standards, every single one of the standards, is being exposed to my students. So even if I might not be able to get to teaching in depthly all of the geometry stuff, at least I know I've exposed them to my students. The other thing I wanna show you is we have a whole area of digital activities. This area, all of our resources, all re resources are being updated regularly. So you will never run out. Um, and that includes digital resources. So we have sixth and seventh grade activities, we have eighth grade, and we have digital escape rooms. And I just wanna show you a few of my favorite digital activities that you will have instant access to. So the first one is this uh, mix and match math activity. So all the numbers will start like this. This one's about least common multiple. So students will match the purple question with the yellow answer key. So they'll just drag these around. So the least common multiple of 12 and three is 30. It's not, but I'm just showing you as an example. Six and 36, 60, perfect. And then they just move them around and you can easily just look to see which one's right and which one's wrong, okay? So e no, you won't be spending a whole ton of time grading this and who doesn't love that, okay? Next, I wanna show you that these mystery puzzles. So you can see here, this is about adding and subtracting integers. So there are 16 questions. As students answer the questions, the mystery image will pop up. So this is self grading. So if a student gets this correct, so negative nine plus three is four, boom, an image pops up, okay? Negative or three plus negative 18 is negative 15, okay? If I get it wrong, then nothing's gonna happen. And as they go through, this whole image will fill up and it will look like this. When you share this with your students, you can easily just hide these sheets so they, they only get this one, so they don't get confused. Okay, the next digital activity I wanna show you is my pixel math activities. This is one of my favorites and one of my students' favorites too. So you can see here, this is about fractions, decimals, and percents. The questions are 
go down here and there's a spot for an answer. And then it looks like just a plain kind of boring Excel sheet. But I can tell you it is nothing but boring. It is so much fun. My students beg to play this. So let me show you how it works. So in this first question, it says write three fourths as decimal. Okay, so three fourths as decimal is 0.75. So you can see here I got it correctly. So a block of color has appeared. Again, self-correcting. Who doesn't love that? Write the decimal 0.56 as a percent, so 56%. Boom, another block of color appeared. Write 78% as a decimal, so 0.78 hundredths. Boom, another block appeared. So let's pretend I got it wrong. If I write 9 tenths as a decimal, let's just say I write 99. See that? Nothing happened. That's how I know I got it wrong. If I get it right, more of it appeared. So as students answer the question, more blocks of color will appear. And in the end, it will come up with this image. This is the Among Us character. Your students will know exactly what it is um, because it is so fun. And I promise you, they will beg you to play this. And the last activity I want to show you is uh, one of my favorites, which is the digital mazes. What I love about this is I love a printable maze, right? Like, because we have those inside the membership, which I showed you. But the digital ones are a little bit more fun because it, the path lights up. So you can see here, it says start here. So 5 plus negative 10 is going to be negative 5. So if I hit enter, the path lights up. So it tells me to go diagonal this way, right? Negative 12 plus negative 31 is going to be negative 43. Okay, and the path lights up. So if I get it wrong, let's just say I write 10 here, nothing happens. But if I get, if I fix it now, negative 13, again, the path lights up. And in the end, you will see a full maze like this. These are brand new, and I'm so excited to incorporate them inside uh, my own classroom this coming year. I know my students are going to love them. We have also digital escape rooms. I just want to show you really quickly for all of these um, topics. So I'm just going to pick, I don't know, pick the first one, distributed property. The um, escape rooms are set up, if you click for students, it is set up to look like a website. Okay, so students will click the sun to start here and they will see they, they will get a you know set of directions and then they're just going to click around the room so if i click the big shark okay it gives me a funny gif okay so that's nothing um if i click this oh it's another gif <laughs> click the umbrella let's see okay so it takes me to this google form so now they have to answer the question if they get it right they will be taken to a success of uh, google form which will give them one clue and in order to exit they will climb out the door and they will use the four clues that are given that they find to escape the room. My students have loved these digital escape rooms. And finally, we have an area for anger charts, we have an area for games, we have an area for teacher trainings, and we have an area for end of year activities. We have something for everybody and by joining the pre algebra Futures Math membership, you have access to everything. There's never anything extra to pay. You can say goodbye to having to scour the internet, wasting hours and hours of your day and wasting hours and hours of your money, in fact, trying to find quality, standard, aligned lesson plans and resources. If you would like to join the membership, I encourage you to click the button below this video or click the button below on this page to join the membership now so that you can have access to everything and save yourself tons of time while teaching with ease. I cannot wait to see you inside the membership. Again, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'll see you inside. Bye.